Well, this is one of the really interesting things that we're starting to learn about dinosaurs now is, is we're getting some clues about how they sounded, which uh, 10 years ago was something nobody thought we'd ever know anything about. In, in uh, 1993, Jurassic Park, they used a whole mixture of different animal sounds, from geese hissing to donkeys yodeling, and uh, turtles barking, horses squealing, and they kind of mashed all of these things together to create the dinosaur noises. Most of the dinosaur sounds you've heard in, in movies or TV series are all wrong because often dinosaurs are depicted as having roars but uh, uh, roars and growls are kind of throaty noises a very mammalian sound and uh, mammals make this sound uh, using their vocal cords. Now we know that birds and reptiles don't have vocal cords so it's very likely that dinosaurs also didn't have vocal cords. So um, we, do, we think the kind of sounds that dinosaurs would have made actually would have been much more like the sounds that birds made. But, but you know, if you take bird calls and you slow them down to make, make them sound like the sounds coming from much larger animals, that's probably how dinosaur sounds would have made. So it's going to be interesting to see what kind of noises they use for the animals in Jurassic World. I look at how modern day vocalisation happens. Um, there are a couple of mechanisms with the way we can actually make sounds and, and animals can make sounds and, and so it was kind of interesting while we are going through the process of the sound design, um, the initial kind of uh, approach just to get some things together is just to bang a whole lot of sounds together and, and it didn't sound right because what you've got is you've got the movement of air um, in any animal, it doesn't matter what it is. You've got the movement of air, which primarily goes across the vocal cords. Um, and then you've got secondary sounds, which are reverberations um, in the epiglottis and things of that nature. Some animals have a hyoid bone, like cats, which create that nice purring sound. Um, then you've got spittle and all sorts of kind of nasty little tones in there. So I, I suppose what we looked at was the size of the animal, um, the, a lot of different animals in that kind of um, range of um, whether it was a predator or was it a large animal or a small, a small animal, things of that nature, and try to sort of um, take our cues from nature.